Hey, this is Salim Rizai again, and I have another walking the line from research to practice. Now, I was taught, and I'm sure many of us were taught in septic shock, we should be targeting maps of 65 and greater millimeters of mercury for our patients. Now, this is a really interesting study called the 65 trial. This is not a new trial. This is a trial that's been out for a few years. But the authors were trying to ask a question in patients in vasodilatory shock, maybe if we allow some permissive hypotension targeting maps of 60 to 65 instead of 65 and greater, maybe that would be okay. Now, this trial is appropriately named because it was performed in 65 ICUs in the United Kingdom. It was patients that were 65 years of age and older. And then the groups were randomized to either usual care, which was targeting a map of 65 and greater, or keeping them in this kind of permissive hypotension group, which was maps of 60 to 65. So what did they find? So this was 2,600 patients. When we look at mortality at 90 days, which was their primary outcome, there was no difference between the groups. When we look at the number of hours patients were on vasopressors, no surprise, by targeting a lower map, there was less hours that the patients were on vasopressors. And finally, adverse events. So was there more acute kidney injury, for example? And there was no statistical difference between the groups. So a few things about this study. Do I think this is practice changing? Not really. So first of all, these were patients that were 65 years of age and older. So this may not extrapolate to younger patients. The second thing I'm going to tell you is that these patients got recruited after being in the ICU for six hours. In other words, these patients had an initial phase of resuscitation, then they arrived to the ICU, and then they had continued resuscitation. This study doesn't answer that initial resuscitation of patients. So I think for patients presenting to the emergency department, we should still keep doing what we're doing, which is targeting that map of 65 and greater. The final thing is, is that I worry about people conflating the results of this study and trying to apply it in environments where it wasn't studied. So for example, down in the ER, nurses usually have a five to one or six to one patient to nurse ratio. Can you imagine trying to go for a map of 60 to 65 while you're caring for five or six patients with all the interruptions and all the chaos that's going on? Just by stepping away, we could have patients accidentally dropping into maps below 60. So I'm really worried about doing this down in the emergency department. Now up in the ICU after the initial resuscitation has been done and where the patient to nurse ratio is two to one, this might be something that's more feasible. There's nothing magical about a map of 65. The bottom line for me is that a map of 60 to 65 is safe in patients with vasodilatory shock that are of the age of 65 or greater in years, but in the ICU after the initial resuscitation is done not in the emergency department. We need to do our initial resuscitation the same way. This doesn't change practice in the emergency department. And I'm worried because of the patient to nurse ratios that we might do something harmful for our patients where their maps even start going below 60, which could have some really untoward effects for our patients. Let me know your thoughts and questions in the comments. Thanks for tuning in.